So much to come on this big, big story today. Unai Emery sacked as Arsenal head coach after the club's worst run in 27 years. They haven't won any of the last seven games and last night's defeat to Eintracht Frankfurt in the Europa League in front of a significantly sparse Emirates stadium proved to be the final act. This is a club statement that confirmed the news shortly after 10 o'clock this morning and it reads, The decision has been taken due to results and performances not being at the level required. We have asked Freddie Lundberg to take responsibility for the first team as interim head coach. We have full confidence in Freddie to take us forward. The search for a new head coach is underway and we will make a further announcement when that process is complete. Arsenal director Josh Kroenke, who of course is the son of the owner Stan Kroenke, said, Our most sincere thanks go to Unai and his colleagues who were unrelenting in their efforts to get the club back to competing at the level we all expect and demand. We wish Unai and his team nothing but future success. Kavi Solikol has been right across this story throughout the day and he tells us where it all went wrong for Emery. I think we need to start on Monday. Uh, Monday, two of the most powerful men at Arsenal uh, flew to the United States to meet the Arsenal owner, Stan Kroenke, and his son, Josh, who's a director at the club. Uh, those two men who flew from uh, London to the States were the Arsenal head of football, Raul Sanlehi, and also the managing director, Vinay Venkatesham. Now, they had a meeting with Kroenke and his son, and I think at that meeting in the States, the decision was basically taken uh, that Unai Emery needed to be replaced. It was really only a question of when he would be replaced. Then we had the situation last night where at a half-empty stadium behind me, Arsenal lost 2-1 uh, to Eintracht Frankfurt. And yet again, uh, there was evidence that the players really didn't seem to be uh, playing for Unai Emery. And yet again, uh, there was evidence that Arsenal supporters had turned on their manager and wanted him uh, removed. Then the final decision was taken by Stan Kroenke to uh, dismiss Unai Emery. Now, as far as Emery himself is concerned, he turned up early, as he usually does, at Arsenal's training ground in North London uh, this morning. He was called into a meeting with Raul Sanlehi, the head of football, and he was told that he was losing his job. Uh, a few minutes later, Edu, the technical director, uh, and also Vinay Venkatesham, uh, the uh, managing director, uh, came into the room as well and spoke to Unai Emery. We're being told that Unai Emery was respectful. Uh, he took the news with good grace. Of course, he was upset, uh, but he took it as well as can be expected in those circumstances. Uh, he also spoke to quite a few of the Arsenal players. Uh, he said goodbye to them, some of them on an individual uh, basis, and he wished them well for the future. Well, uh, maybe significantly, there hasn't been much of a reaction from the Arsenal squad to Emery's sacking, but David Luiz has tweeted in the last half an hour, he said, sad day for everybody, especially because we let you down, boss. Sorry. Thank you and the amazing staff for everything. You're a hard worker, passionate for football, and a big example always. Doesn't matter the results. Good luck for the future. So that was that from uh, Luis. So Arsenal turned to Emery's assistant and former midfielder Lundberg in the short term. He took training uh, this morning and he told the players to stick together and play for the shirt. He'll confirm his coaching team soon and it's likely to include Steve Bold. Lundberg coached the club's under-23 side and got his UEFA Pro licence back in 2016. And he himself had this message for the club's fans. He says, however long I oversee Arsenal for, I will give everything I have to put smiles on faces again. We have a busy few weeks ahead and the team needs your support. Let's get to work. Well, we understand that some senior figures at Arsenal wanted Josie Mourinho to replace Emery before he took the Spurs job. He told us he was sad to hear of his departure and was asked if he would have taken the Arsenal job if he'd been offered it two weeks ago. There is no point to tell it. Um, it didn't happen. It happened now. And uh, I'm so happy here that I couldn't even think about the possibility to, to go to another to another place. You can put now in front of me 
any club in, in the world, I would not move. It's always sad news. Uh, I felt it as a kid, when my dad was sacked as a manager. I felt myself when I have been sacked previously. There is not one single manager that is sacked that I'm happy with. I always feel the deja vu situation. So I'm sad for it, but that's life. And Duna is a fantastic coach. Not happy at Arsenal, obviously, but a fantastic coach with a proven record. A little bit of a rest. Another big club will come for him and his career will be will be back on track. So no dramas, mi amigo. Keep going and um, you will get another club. Well, we understand Brendan Rodgers is one of the names on Arsenal's shortlist, but the man himself has told us he's committed to Leicester. It's a natural, something that naturally happens. It, uh, if you're doing OK, people want to take you away from something that you really enjoy. And, um, and if you're not, then, uh, like I said, it, uh, if you're not linked, then it doesn't really matter. So, um, but it's always the case, isn't it? Well, whenever jobs come up, um, there's always a number of names. I've said, like I've said a number of times here, but we're, we're at the beginning of something here. Um, I've absolutely loved every minute since I've come here. You know, my relationship with the uh, with the people who, who run the club and organise the club, and of course, very importantly, my relationship with the players is very strong. And and we feel as if we're, we're beginning something really exciting. So, um, so yeah, the uh, it, it's a fantastic club, Arsenal. Um, you know, one of the, the great clubs in this uh, in this country. But uh, but like I say, they'll uh, I'm sure that the people at Arsenal. If, if they move you and I on, they, they have an idea of who they want to bring in. Max Allegri is also favoured by some on the Arsenal board. We've been told the former Juventus boss was interviewed for the job 18 months ago. He was perceived as being slightly arrogant after he appeared to want Arsenal to convince him to come to the club. Well, there is much more on this story over on the Sky Sports website, including an article here about all the managers that are being potentially linked to take over from Unai Emery at the Emirates. And we want you to get involved today as well. We do have a poll there simply asking who should replace Emery at Arsenal. There are the options that we are listing at the moment, the ones that we've mentioned. Of course, Freddie Lundberg, who is taking temporary charge. Mercia Pochettino there as well, uh, as is Max Allegri that we've just spoken about. Charlie Nicholas, his thoughts as well, saying that uh, Arsenal should move quick to get hold of Rodgers. So yeah, we've had almost 17,000 votes so far. Head on over to the website, get involved. We want to know what you think. Joe, thanks very much indeed. So Emery departs after just 18 months. And it's a call that's taken a few of his former counterparts somewhat by surprise. I'm so sorry for him. So it's a... Uh, every time one manager is sacked, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not a good news, honestly. So... Uh, no change one <coughs> nothing in my opinion about uh, his uh, his capacity uh, he's incredible professional he did incredible well in Spain in French he made an incredible achievement I don't think one person is going to do it to win three well he did it Zidane with Madrid but three Europa Leagues in, in a row with Sevilla is one of the most incredible achievements. So, but football. So he knows. I know. We depend on the results. It's simple. So, uh, but I'm sure that he will find a new job soon. Well, uh, Pep's assistant, Mikel Arteta, is also being considered as a possible successor to Emery. This was his short response to those links. Uh, he's in the squad. He travelled to Newcastle. Yeah, would you would you expect to ask? Do you think Arsenal could come asking? No question for me. No, I was surprised when I got up this morning and saw the saw the, the news. Um, yeah, what can I say? That's how the um, the football world is. I have no inside information. I have no no clue what exactly happened there. But obviously the people were not happy. Um, the deciders, the board was not happy with the performances, with the results, whatever. And at the end, they have to make decisions. That's our life. That's how we. Um, that's what you sign 
in the moment when you sign a contract that we have to we have to make the best of the situation in the club and when people think it's not the best we don't do the best and it's, it's that's a possible solution obviously it happened now to Unai, I wish him all the best of course um, he's an outstanding manager and he showed that in so many in different countries in different leagues so um, yeah he will be fine in, in, in the future but of course I'm, I'm sure he he had big ambitions with um, with Arsenal and didn't work out yeah and um, now Arsenal has to find a solution maybe um, Freddie's taking the job now right for interim wise so yeah so that's how it is there are there are coaches out there and um, um, younger coaches maybe less experienced but that doesn't mean a lot so maybe he can take the chance I don't know I wouldn't say inevitable because um, nothing's inevitable I have a way in football we know that we're not we're used to a few surprises particularly in the last few weeks and um, you know it's not nice I know the job you know I work we work hard here, everyone wants to be successful, everyone has a work ethic and uh, an idea and it doesn't always go the way you want it or not. We will get the views of some of Arsenal's greatest players and Gary Neville here tells us why Emery is not to blame and we'll gauge the mood of the always vocal Arsenal fans. First though, let's get the inside story of how all of this came about. And let's go live to Cavi Solikol, who's at the Emirates for us this Friday night. Cavi, good evening to you. When and how was Emery told this news? Well, he was told the news uh, this morning, Jim. He arrived, at, he, as he usually does, uh, very early this morning at Arsenal's training ground uh, in North London. And he was called into a meeting uh, by Arsenal's head of football, Raul Sanlehi. At that meeting, he was told that he was uh, losing his job because results and performances had not been good enough. Uh, then Edu, the technical director, uh, came into the room and he was also joined by Vina Venkatesham, uh, who is the managing director of Arsenal. Uh, they also offered Unai Emery their commiserations. And I understand that uh, Unai Emery was very, very respectful and understanding. Uh, I was told that he took the news as well as can be expected uh, in the circumstances. Uh, Unai Emery then had a chance uh, to speak to some of the Arsenal players on an individual basis and to say his goodbyes to them and also to wish them well for the future. Kevin, we know it's seven games without a win, but why have Arsenal decided to act now? Well, we have to go back to the uh, start of this week uh, on Monday, just uh, 48 hours uh, after Arsenal drew uh, with Southampton. Uh, Raul Sanlehi, the head of football, and Vinay Venkatesham, uh, the managing director, flew to America to meet the Arsenal owner, Stan Kroenke, and also his son, uh, Josh Kroenke, who is a director here. At that meeting, uh, I understand that Unai Emery's future was discussed. There were very real concerns about the fact that uh, he seemed to have uh, lost uh, the respect of some of the players in the dressing room. There are also concerns about the fact that the uh, Arsenal fans had appeared to turn against him. And there are also concerns about his communication uh, problems. Although uh, Unai Emery has been working very, very hard uh, to uh, learn English and to speak English, it's fair to say that he has had some issues uh, with communicating with the media and also communicating with fans and his own players. So I don't think that helped him. Uh, but look, the final decision was taken by Stan Kroenke. I think there were powerful people at Arsenal who'd made up their mind uh, last week and the week before that the end game uh, was coming into play for Unai Emery, but it was Stan Kroenke's uh, decision. He made the final decision, and that final decision was made after last night's performance here against Eintracht Frankfurt. That was just simply not good enough. Uh, the defeat, the performance, the manner of the performance, and also because the stadium behind me uh, was uh, more than a half empty. So the writing was on the wall for Unai Emery. I think the decision was made in outline 
uh, in the US earlier this week. After that meeting, I think it was a question of when, uh, not if Unai Emery was going to be dismissed. And then uh, the performance last night meant that the Arsenal board and the Arsenal owner uh, felt that they had no other option but to dismiss Unai Emery. Gabby, this all comes just nine days after Tottenham replaced Mauricio Pochettino with Jose Mourinho. But could Arsenal have gone for Mourinho? Well, this is where it gets very interesting, Jim, because uh, my understanding today is that there were some senior figures at Arsenal uh, who wanted Jose Mourinho to replace Unai Emery. Uh, I've been told that this was a, a couple of weeks ago and of course it never happened uh, because Jose Mourinho was offered the Spurs job after Maurizio Pochettino left Spurs last week and Jose Mourinho accepted that job. So very intriguing uh, that some senior figures here actually did want Jose Mourinho before he got the Spurs job. Now, my colleague uh, Gary Cottrell uh, was at a news conference with Jose Mourinho today and he asked Mourinho about the link with Arsenal. If this had happened a fortnight ago, was it the kind of job that you might have been interested in? There is no point to tell it. Um, it didn't happen, it happened now. And uh, I'm so happy here that I couldn't even think about the possibility to to go to another to another place. You can put now in front of me any club in in the world. I would not move. Gabby, for the moment, Freddie Lundberg then is in charge. Is he a contender for the job on a permanent basis? I think he is a contender, Jim, uh, simply because. Uh, the board here have been very impressed with the job he's done uh, while he's been working under Unai Emery. And of course, he's got a fantastic record here as a former player. So I think he is uh, a contender. Also, uh, because of the fact that the Arsenal board are aware that it is going to be difficult for them to uh, find a high-caliber candidate to take over mid-season. When you're talking about a club the size of uh, Arsenal, uh, the kind of managers, head coaches they're looking for typically tend to be uh, the kind of managers and head coaches who want to take over at a club uh, during the summer because that gives them a full pre-season to work with their players. Having said that, yes, of course, Arsenal will be looking at candidates, will be trying uh, to find the right man. But in the short term, uh, they have total faith in Freddie Lundberg, I'm being told. And if results uh, are good, you never know. He may get the job on a full-time basis. So, Cavi, if not Lundberg, then who? What can you tell us tonight about the Arsenal shortlist? Well, we have... Uh, managed to get together a, a short list of names uh, that Arsenal are looking at as a replacement for Unai Emery. Uh, the names on that short list are uh, Max Allegri, the former Juventus head coach, Carlo Ancelotti, who of course is at Napoli at the moment. He has a difficult relationship with the Napoli uh, president, so maybe uh, he would want to leave Italy and return uh, to the Premier League. Then there's Mikel Arteta, who's working under Pep Guard at Manchester City, a former Arsenal player who was very, very close uh, to getting the Arsenal job 18 months ago, uh, but the Arsenal board decided to give the job to Emery instead of Arteta. Then there's, of course, Freddie Lundberg, who we've talked about, who's taken over in an interim capacity. Then another interesting name, Brendan Rodgers. What a fantastic job he is doing at Leicester City. But I think it would be very, very difficult to uh, get Brendan Rodgers out of Leicester or even to convince him uh, to leave Leicester because why would you leave uh, a club who are playing so well, who are actually above Arsenal in the Premier League. Why would you leave them uh, to come to Arsenal at the moment? And also uh, another name on their shortlist is Nuno Espirito Santo, who's doing a fantastic job with Wolves. Again, I'm being told uh, that it would be difficult uh, to get him to leave Wolves 
in mid-season, especially because they're, sewing, uh, they're playing so well and the fact that they are also in Europe at the moment. But I suppose uh, being here all day and speaking to quite a lot of Arsenal fans, the name they uh, keep mentioning uh, is Allegri. Uh, they've uh, looked at his record, they've looked at the fact that he's won so many uh, trophies at Juventus, and also there is the fact that he is available at the moment. But there are a couple of caveats. Uh, the first one is that his English is not perfect. He has been taking English lessons. Uh, the second caveat is that our sources at Sky in Italy uh, are telling us that as far as they're concerned, uh, Allegri is interested in the Arsenal job, but he would prefer to wait until the summer uh, before taking another job in football uh, for the simple fact that he is enjoying a bit of time out from the game. And like a lot of big, big managers, uh, he prefers to take up jobs during the summer. Gavi, thanks very much indeed. Well, uh, this is how Arsenal delivered the news to their fans uh, shortly after 10 o'clock this morning. A club statement read, the decision has been taken due to results and performances not being at the level required. We've asked Freddie Lundberg to take responsibility for the first team as interim head coach. We have full confidence in Freddie to take us forward. The search for a new head coach is underway and we will make a further announcement when that process is complete. Let's get some reaction then to some of these big changes at Arsenal. Former Arsenal striker and Sky Sports pundit Alan Smith told us the time was right for Emery to leave and he's no doubt who should take over. It was the right decision. It's a sad day in many ways because my old club's in a state of flux, you know, uh, there's a lack of direction, lack of certainty there, you know, uh, what, what, what's lying in the future. But um, I was at the game last night and I think it was the worst performance of the season so far and there have been a few poor ones. It's a plum roll. It's uh, arguably the biggest club in London in terms of the history, the success, um, a wonderful stadium, training ground, whatever you want to say about the infrastructure and there are good players there. I would like to see a younger, more innovative coach get, get the job. Mikel Arteta was really close to getting it last time and they just ducked out of it at the last minute. But, you know, Pep Guardiola, you've only got to ask him what he feels about Arteta as a coach and as a future manager. And I think, you know, players these days, they need good coaching, something that's going to inspire them on a day-to-day -day basis, keep them interesting interested. Their attention spans probably aren't as long as they used to be. Footballers' attention spans have never been long, but maybe shorter than ever. And you've got to keep them motivated. And from that point of view, coaching has got to be spot on. And I think Arteta, that kind of coach, would be the man to achieve that. I think they need to be bold, the Arsenal board now, not go for a steady hand, somebody to steady the ship, you know, an Ancelotti, somebody like that, as, as experienced as he is. I wouldn't favour that course of action. I think they need to be bold and go for one of the up-and-coming coaches and Arteta would be my shout in the summer. Well, Gary Neville here has uh, some pretty strong opinion about today's news and the way that Arsenal is currently being run. He feels Emery has been let down by the board and the failure to recruit good enough players. When the fans don't turn up, it's always a massive problem for a manager. It's a reflection upon always on the board, it's always a reflection upon the sporting directors when a manager failed, the succession planning obviously from Arsene Wenger hasn't succeeded, they're now on a roundabout where they're changing managers uh, quickly, uh, we've seen it at other clubs and it falls in some ways unsurprising, it's always going to be difficult for someone to come in you know, after such a long period of a manager, uh, a new night break. Uh, I, I think he's been disrespected at times in the last few weeks, his, ac his accent, uh, his manner, have been, uh, have been disrespected, he's been ridiculed. I think that was, to be fair, getting quite unsavoury. Uh, the reality of it is this is a top coach who ultimately you know, couldn't find his way in this particular job and has struggled in it. I mean, let's be clear about this. These defenders are uncoachable, some of them. Let's be clear about that. I don't know who's been responsible for recruitment at Arsenal over the last sort of two or three years. It's obviously changed. There have been new people brought in. But if I was the boardroom, if I was in the boardroom at uh, Arsenal, I'd be giving those lot a right rocket, you know, watching some of the shambles. There's no, there's no way that Unai Emery is telling David Luiz to step up two times, three times and play offside, or some of the hideous things you see 
from you know the other defenders and other midfield players at Arsenal. You think of Shaka the other week. You know, Unai Emery's a man of honour, and you see sort of his behaviour. You know, this is something that's far deeper than the coach. Unai Emery, to be fair, might be actually sort of you know sailing his way back, you know, over the shores of the Channel this afternoon and be very happy to leave behind. You know, what is quite simply a very average bunch of players. And if you said go and find the three or four more er most erratic centre backs in Europe, it's almost as if that's been the brief to the recruitment department. If Freddie Lundberg now picks up those players, let's see if he can organise them into a defence that doesn't concede shots and doesn't concede goals. He might be able to do a better job uh, in some ways on that front, but it'll be short lived because those players there will let you down 100%. This is somebody who's been a great coach for many, many years who's had great success, and this job's found him out from a point of view he's not been able to impact the players. Uh, and sometimes in football we can look too deeply into it. Sometimes there's just not that connection between the club, the manager, the players. You know, he hasn't just become a bad coach overnight. Something's just not connected here. And you're right, in the end, in the end it maybe looks like he doesn't know what he's doing because he's changed his mind, he's doing different things. He's, um, yeah, it looks erratic off the pitch as well as it does on the pitch. But when you're watching some of the things that we've seen at Arsenal in terms of decision-making on the pitch, I would imagine every single week he goes into his dressing room or into his coach's room, sorry, looks, gets his flip chart out, looks at the players and sort of... It's almost like sort of pin the tail on the donkey. Which one do I pick? I would imagine a new manager that comes in now is going to want to wipe out half of that dressing room. That costs money. You know, you wonder, though, do these stats suggest Arsenal might have acted prematurely? Emery was in charge of 51 Premier League games at Arsenal and he actually exactly won the same number of points as Arsene Wenger did in his first 51 in charge. But Emery's Arsenal have won fewer games, lost more games, scored fewer goals and conceded more. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7am Eastern on NBCSN. And for more than 1,400 hours of exclusive Premier League content, make sure to visit nbcsports.com gold.